Hi there, welcome to Insomnia Insights number 403. If you have wondered what the ideal uh, circumstances are, in ideal condition for sleep are, well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. This is a question I get a lot. So uh, let's jump right into it, in fact. So let's define it. So idealism, you know, can have many meanings, but uh, in this context of sleep, this is how I define it. Idealism is, is the idea that ideal and modifiable circumstances or conditions for sleep exist. Uh, so that's that's idealism, which is actually very common. And we'll talk about like two ways to look at that. Look at this. Uh, a, perhaps the most common one is is the the outside one. So the ideal outside circumstances are uh, about things like temperature, sound, light, and perhaps you know where you where you where you sleep in the bed. You know, and we typically hear that. Uh, you know, if the bedroom is cool, dark, quiet, comfortable bed, like those are kind of the ideal outside circumstances, if you will. How about the inside ones? Well, the inner ones uh, are related to your state of mind, if you will. And it is often thought that the ideal inner circumstances for sleep are the absence of thoughts, that you're calm, you have no physical discomfort, and no anxiety signals, no palpitations or jerks or things of that nature. So, you know, if you put this together, uh, the idea becomes that if the outside and uh, inside circumstances are favorable or perhaps even ideal, sleep will happen. Deep, refreshing, rejuvenating, like consistent, predictable sleep will happen if these ideals are met. Now, the thing is that uh, this isn't true. <laughs> well, you could say that perhaps, you know, it's true to some degree, but we'll see why it actually is like this whole idea is not true and very very problematic actually so let's start with uh, with looking at what are like what are the requirements for sleep to happen there's only one there's only one requirement requirement really and the only requirement is uh, for us to have a sleep drive which means that um if we you know if our bodies uh do uh, need some sleep and we are sleepy I mean, we don't even feel sleepy but if our bodies need sleep then sleep can happen like uh, that's a requirement if there's no sleep drive, if uh, we just slept a whole bunch, we literally just woke up after sleeping a whole bunch, then the, you know sleep really, really cannot happen. Which is, by the way, different from if you don't feel sleepy, that's different. That's 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 hyper arousal, often mask sleep. In a sleep drive, it's just kind of like uh, sometimes you don't feel hungry, but you know you haven't eaten in a long time. Similar there, like so. Sleep drive is just kind of the body's need for sleep. That's the only requirement there is for sleep to happen. So having said that, do I say that these circumstances, whether they're outside or inside circumstances, don't matter? Not true. They matter to some degree, but they're not important. And we're going to see why uh, in a second. I'm going to go over two, two points that I uh, thought were really important. But what I want to say here with that they're not that important is that you can I actually have a client right now who's in London and there's like a heat wave. And he's wondering like, you know, about like, is the heat the reason I can't sleep? And, you know, of course, if it's very hot and you're sweaty, you're not going to sleep as well as if it's like if you like it cool and you're comfortable. That is true. You know, heat, for example, can disrupt your sleep to some degree, but it, you can still sleep well or reasonably well or OK or fine, even if it was a pretty hot, you know, it was pretty hot. And so even though heat can have some impact on your sleep, it does not cause you to have insomnia. It does not cause you to go to wander and ponder and think and have fear and palpitations. Heat doesn't do that. So the outside circumstances are not that important. You know, they, it's not nice if it's very hot, but, you know, uh, the heat wave passes and then uh, that circumstance has, has changed. And, you know, how about inner circumstances? You know, that's a little trickier one because it can really seem like, it can very easily seem like if I'm really anxious, um, then, you know, that's it. I'm definitely not going to sleep. But it turns out this is not true. And this is the first point, which is very, very important. You can sleep well, even if you've been anxious about sleep all day long. And the reason I think this is so important is that uh, it, it often seems impossible if you've kind of like you've thought about sleep all day long and you've been really anxious, you've been nervous, you've been stressed, or you've been anxious about something completely different, and then sleep can still happen. I hear this all the time from, from, from clients who tell me like, oh, I was so surprised. I, I, I was really worried and I still slept, you know? And the same goes for other in, inner circumstances. Like if you're, 
you can have been angry, frustrated, you felt hopeless, you know, uh, you didn't believe you could sleep, you were not convinced at all, you had no confidence. None of those things actually are uh, requirements for sleep, meaning you don't have to be calm or, uh, you know, uh, feel really confident in sleep. None of those are requirements for sleep. And the reason I think this is so important because is this. Idealism is such a big roadblock, you know, such a big, big speed bump or, or like something that stands in your way of sleeping well. So often I have clients who like feel like they just have to clear their mind. They have to manage their thoughts. They have to feel calm or else they won't sleep. And you can see that this becomes this extra source of frustration, creating this ideal inner, uh, you know, um, inner, inner, inner conditions, if you will, which is impossible, by the way, nobody can willfully like create that, that creates so much like the, the attempt at creating ideal inner conditions creates so much struggle. So I think this is super, super, super helpful to know that sleep can happen, even if you're anxious, it's not like the, the, the only requirement for sleep is some sleep drive, nothing else uh, really stands in your way. And number two here is, is, is this one that Trying to obtain the ideal uh, or outside circumstances creates a big and real obstacle, which I kind of I kind of already went in my second point there. But uh, very very common, of course, is the um, the attempt at creating the ideal outside circumstances, which is again like finding the perfect temperature, the, the blocking every source of light and things of that nature, which just like trying to control the inner ones creates so much preoccupation and worry and stress, etc. That that in fact becomes a reason sleep doesn't happen. So in conclusion here, what I want to say is that uh, when you when you know that, yes, sleep drive is the only thing that is required for sleep, and really, I think nobody on this channel has trouble sleeping because of a lack of sleep drive, you know, because it's very simple. If you don't sleep much, your body does want to sleep. So the, the take home here really becomes when you know that you abandon the idea of like the sleep idealism, that there are these ideal outside or inner uh, circumstances or conditions that have to be met when you abandon that idea. And you see that sleep can happen even if you're anxious or sad or, or stressed or hopeless or something like that, the path of freedom becomes easier and lighter, really. If you abandon this idea of like ideal circumstances, then, you know, things just get easier. It's just like one less thing you have to try to manage and control and everything you abandon that is something you are trying to control or manage uh, it, it lends itself to a much more peaceful and lighter and easier path towards sleeping well for the rest of your life. <laughs> How about that? Hope you like this episode. Um, any comments, please leave them in the comment section. And as always, uh, if you'd like to submit a question to open class, then there is a link in the description. And if you would like uh, some more help than you find in this, uh, in this, in these videos on your path to sleeping well, if you'd like some help connecting the dots, then head over to our, to our website, thesleepcoachable.com and check out how you can work with myself and other coaches as well. So that's it. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and hope to have you back real soon. Until then, 